Hey guys, Mantope here again, doing another after action review. Let's go ahead and hop on in and see what happened. Uh, in this first match, I am taking on the Water Monkey, Perna, and Visa Chill. And the second round is a Jean, Armarna, and Theo. Now, the uh, idea behind the first comp was to just uh, snipe out one of the units and work my way down. Uh, RNG did not play in my favor this match. I ki killed the Viva, Viva Chill and then uh, proceeded to get wrecked by the Perna and the Water Monkey. Uh, Covenant is great for burst damage. As you see, even uh, right off the first turn, I was able to just destroy the LND unit. Uh, the monkey, the water monkey ends up doing me in. Uh, he's able to take out my Velo Jewel, which frees up the Perna to uh, go and do Perna things, which you'll see here in a second. I believe it uh, triple procs into my uh, Covenant. And that's the end of the first round. Now, this one is my standard save team. Uh, the only difference uh, from my normal comp, this variant of Molong is on Vampire. I am very fortunate to have two Molongs and be able to alternate as needed between a sustained build and a yellow uh, violent build. Now, I really 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 think that the Wind Paladin is undervalued as a unit. I hear a lot of people saying that they believe she's the worst of the uh, natural element class. I honestly think uh, she's better than the fire one uh, for guild wars and siege at least. I do like the fire one. I have that one as well. Uh, I just don't use it nearly as much. Uh, the shield and the two turn immunity at full health uh, very beneficial especially when you're stacking it with uh, two HP tanks. Even with uh, Theo Mars doing Theo Mars things right here, as you can see, it's very easily mitigated, especially with the sustain brought by uh, the Wind Paladin. Pretty clean, simple match here. Uh, in a better uh, luck draw where I don't get Vio sacked, uh, that first match should have been a win. Uh, here's uh, the runes highlighted with the stats again. Uh, Vela Jewels on Violent Will, 141 speed. Uh, my best stat. Uh, confirmed on an accuracy build and my Covenant. Uh, plus 1961 for attack. Decent crit damage, decent crit rate. Uh, I just biggest thing was getting him on will because I knew I wasn't going to turn one with him because as you saw his speed is relatively low and this is my uh, vampire Molong still tuned to go about, about I believe five speed after my uh, bulwark and the biggest discrepancy you see is in the base speed For this round, I'm going up against a Bulwark, a uh, Water Pony Ritesh, and a Light Golem I'm going to use to tank out the Odin in the Kamun Odin Bestet comp. Now this one I was only worried about uh, the defense break from the Ritesh and the possible first skill freeze from the Water Pony. But I wanted to eliminate the uh, biggest uh, threat of sustain on their side, which was the Bulwark. Um, Bulwarks typically aren't very good on defense because they don't wait for their knowledge to stack. So they don't get the maximum use out of their uh, skill 3. And uh, with a Water Pony being on defense, it's going to buff the immunity every turn. And uh, it has a passive where it gains defense when it's attacked when it's in pony form so it really helps 
knowledge stack the bulwark that's why just as i said in my last video when i see a pony especially the water pony on defense nine times out of ten i'm bringing the bulwark just because it's going to help uh, sustain me even better than normal because the defense is going to uh, knowledge cycle me so much and in this comp i am once again using the uh vampire variant of my molong and that is just because of its sustainability uh, if anything does go off hand i don't have to worry about trying to keep up heals uh, if the water pony managed to freeze my bulwark or if uh, my wind pally did get uh, defense broken where i had to go on the defensive and try to sustain it but as you saw i was never in any danger of losing this round so we'll move on to the next round. Now this was more of a YOLO, I'm gonna try this out team. Uh, my uh, Rauk is not overly built too well. And I did sort of uh, luck out uh, with uh, procs in this match. Because as you see, my Rauk is very, very, very squishy and he was able to land the defense break and the block heal on him. So it neutralized my uh, Perna's passive of sustaining him. Uh, the whole reason why I brought the Light Golem once again was to tank out everything that this team was going to throw at it. And he does his job fairly efficiently. And here's where I get my luck. Five attacks and a defense break and a proc. And then an additional proc from the kill. And with uh, Odin out of the way, I mean, the threat drastically drops. And you just see another proc frenzy from uh, Rauk there. I do end up losing my Inugami. But uh, Perna is able to sustain my uh, Light Golem, which is advantageous for me because now I know uh, all it takes is time for me to turn cycle back into my immunity and my defense buff. And I did switch my Light Golem to a uh, defense crit damage, defense build. So I would be able to, uh, the Light Golem would be able to solo Bestead at this point, even if my Perna were to drop. But my Perna still has its second life. Uh, the match is very well in hand. Uh, the Light Golem is an amazing unit just because of its passive. It takes five hits to kill it. And because it self buffs defense, uh, and it does damage based on defense and the first skill has the ability to stun and I believe taunt so yeah the utility of the unit it's an amazing unit for a three-star unit now we'll go ahead and look at my runes for this uh, you guys already saw my bulwark 128 speed base speed 102 uh, focus will shield will and shield are there for the initial two stacks Uh, once again, the violent or the uh, vampire Molong. I know the uh, Molong has really fallen out of the meta, but I recently pulled both of mine and am enjoying using them. I don't see, I didn't see the big dip as you. Okay, we'll talk about the uh, light golem here. Uh, plus uh, 1,231 defense, decent HP. 50% crit rate, 135% crit damage. Just because of its passive, it's not overly rune hungry. So you can get away with using lower tier runes and still have a decent uh, light golem uh, for uh, offense. Well, like I was saying, I didn't see the uh, nerf at, like most people did with um, uh, when they uh, changed the skill too. Uh, this is my Perna. It's on a violent energy build, and that's only because it's the best of what I had. And as I stated, my Rauk is not built very great. Uh, usually I just throw it in there for when I'm doing rifts or when I get bored and want a different clearing for farming. Uh, this last match is against a typical Kamun Theo Chasun, which I am bringing Chiwu, Bestet, Theo to counter, 
and then once again my safety. The whole purpose behind this is to outspeed and then block beneficial effects and kill the Theo and that virtually eliminates any threat that the other team may have posed. Uh, I didn't get the defense break uh, with my uh, Theo, that normally would kill but I did lock out into a proc which I was still able to finish off the kill. Uh, my Theo is not built overly great either, I don't use him too often. It is a great unit and if you are lacking on units, I do highly recommend putting in a uh, decent rune build for him. Uh, at this point I have 180 six star units so my runes are spread pretty thin but I tend to focus on uh, different units at different times. Uh, back in early game Theo did carry me through Guild Wars and the beginning part of Siege before he finally got deruned for other uh, units that I was able to pull. See, at this point, I'm wondering why I put my uh, Bastet on accuracy because it always misses the defense break, which was the whole reason I switched the uh, slot 6 rune to accuracy. Now, uh, this uh, was a very easy pick for me. I saw Skogul on the defense, they have Perna, so I know my uh, Luis will tank the Perna, no problem. Uh, Skogul, even if it was faster and on violent, uh, wouldn't have done much damage to me because of the shield. Uh, Skogles are just very weak when you bring in a shield unit. So this was a pretty easy match for me. Uh, just knowing how the AI is going to work, knowing the game mechanics, and eliminating uh, any splash damage from the Skogle really neutralized the threat of the Perna. And Bastet does have an AoE uh, that can possibly land a defense break, but because Luis brings two turn immunity, just timing that out appropriately in between when their Bastet is using their AoE versus their uh, third skill, uh, just minimizing any uh, impact that that AoE may have. Uh, occasionally I will pop the uh, invincibility for reasons like this, just so I take no damage, so the next turn I can go ahead and uh, have more HP when I decide to buff the shield and the uh, immunity and that just allows for the full benefit of the uh, skill 3 to come into effect because you only get the immunity when you are at full health after the heal. But it was a pretty easy sequence of uh, Guild Wars uh, barring the procs in the first one and we'll go ahead and take a look at the rune set. Uh, my Chi Wu, and you'll see me in my stellar fashion right here. His speed looks a little low, that's because he's missing his uh, slot 4 rune. Uh, my Bastet, 163 speed. Uh, uh, Swift broken. And then my Theo, plus 83 speed. Uh, he gets elemental advantage, so he's basically sitting at 80% crit rate but on Violent Will. And then once again, my save team, and this was the Violent variant that I used for my Malone, and that was because I figured that the match wouldn't be taking too long, so I would be safe bringing in a more YOLO comp. But that pretty much covers this Guild War. If you saw anything you guys liked or saw anything I can improve on, please comment below. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe, hit bells, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. You guys have a great day.